times when I'm looking around, there's a lot of us that have served with Joe um, in training and in combat, and there really is no finer warfighter, warrior, or person um, in our Army. And it's, uh, it's, it's a great day for, for our Army, um, Joe, to promote you to Lieutenant General. So uh, I'll talk a many, many years ago. Um, takes a lot of great support from family. So I'm going to start off by recognizing some of the heavy hitters here um, with Team Ryan. And I want to start off with uh, Julie. So Joe and Julie on September 16th, so about six weeks ago, just celebrated their 29th wedding anniversary. So how about a hand for... So they got, Joe and Julie got engaged on New Year's Eve in 1994. So this New Year's Eve, 30 years, be a, should be a special one. So there might be one light that's still on af after 10 o'clock um, on this street. Um, Joe and Julie met at a bar in Fayetteville in 1992. So I only point that out because there's a lot of Army love stories that started just like that at a bar in uh, in Fayetteville but I wasn't supposed to say I wasn't supposed to divulge that huh? <laughs> I could have made up a story you know I'm good for that um, Julie I just want to thank you for all that you've done for our soldiers and, and families through the years from company all the way up to division level doing family readiness groups and support in the community um, I know that uh, you have always been a stalwart supporter of our soldiers, but I mostly want to thank you for all that you've done to support Joe through the years. And we were just talking about when we yanked Joe out here to be the deputy G3, came out, and I think Ellie was still in high school, so they had to do the little bit of a separation, and then when she got out here, had to live on the 18th floor here in D.C. with two small little dogs, um, Fred and Harry. but. Um, Julie, thank you for all that you've done, and I know all that you will continue to do to support Joe and our soldiers and families. So probably their biggest accomplishment is their wonderful children um, that are here today, and, and also many of us have gotten a chance to watch them grow up through the years. So Abby, raise your hand up there so everybody can see. A graduate student um, in, in New York City in Manhattan at the School for Visual Arts. Great to see you. Joseph, 22, works for affordable housing nonprofit, just graduated college. Come on out here a little bit further, Joseph. I want So Joseph and I, he asked me last night if I could help him arrange a, a trip to the barber shop <laughs> this afternoon, and I said I would do whatever I could to the schedule to make sure that we have that. So 1,400, Joseph, 1,400, we're all set. Um, I know, like I said, Abby and Joseph both live in Brooklyn, so when we complain about uh, D.C. traffic, we can just think about what they put up with all the time. You can go just crossing boroughs. I know it can be nuts. And then Ellie, um, 18 years old, just started her freshman year at the University of Chicago, so we are quickly um, developing, you know, talking here about our uh, fandom for the Cubs and the, and the Bears. And I was going to tell Ellie that you just need to get used to saying next year because that's what I've been saying for, for many years. So I always think about the, the kids. I look at these uh, wonderful young adults and just think about growing up in the, in the Army and all you've done. And it just reminds me, I think, of how special of a place it is to raise a family um, in the Army. So it's great to have you guys all here with us. Um, Joe's sister is Carrie is here. Where are you at, Carrie? Right there. And her husband, Brian, um, here from Fairfield, Connecticut. And I know that uh, Carrie and Brian have been a real source of uh, love and support um, for Joe and Julie through the years. And it started really with their time at West Point. And Carrie used to sneak Joe and his buddies out of uh, Camp Buckner. Um, during training for a couple of hours. And um, I know Joe is a better uh, infantryman than I am because uh, I snuck out one time, got caught, and spent 50 hours on the area. So you must have had a much better plan with that than I did. Um, and then also helped him throw um, first year tailgates. So I'm sure that was great having your sister 
um, so close. But again, I just want to thank you for all that you've done. I know Joe and Julie really appreciate all you've done for them through the years, and it's great that you traveled down 95, um, which is no nothing easy um, to join us here today. Their, their kids are also here. Their daughter's Kate, who works in publishing in Manhattan. Uh, Maeve, who's a recent graduate of Gettysburg College, and Claire, who's a freshman at Lafayette College. So great to have you here. Um, Joe's mom and dad passed, and I know that uh, he'll probably talk about them, real source of uh, Joe's work ethic, and I think his sense of service. Joe Sr. was a legendary high school basketball coach and brought the best out in kids and many who ended up serving in uniform and his mom Judy uh, was a mentor to young people an accomplished artist and woodworker and I think Joe still cherishes her table saw I don't even make anything with that but you have it okay yeah, I was just checking I knew he's busy being the G3 here so um, I think Julie's mom and dad, um, Mari and Command Sergeant Major retired Tim Lloyd are watching on live stream, so a big airborne out there um, to, to you. Um, Tim retired in 1993 as the 18th Airborne Corps um, Sergeant Major after 35 years of service and two tours in Vietnam. And I know that uh, Tim, I hear, has advised Joe through the years to retire right at 20. So, um, and I'm glad, it probably was good advice, Tim, but I'm glad Joe didn't take it, and he's right here with us. And Mari, um, Joe says you're the best cook he will ever know, and so I am, uh, I would love to check that out next time you're up here in D.C. and, and uh, verify that claim, but I'm glad you're watching online. And we also have uh, Joe's aunt, Pat, and her husband, Bob, that are that are here right up front came down from Buffalo so Bill's Mafia um, that's down here and Julie's sister Marissa is here um, from Fort Smith flew here from Fort Smith Arkansas avoided all the bad weather down there and her husband Paul and Paul is uh, is a retired master sergeant from the unit um, down at, at Fort Liberty and it's been great it was great to meet you all last night so Joe was raised in Pearl River, New York, which is just down the Hudson from West Point. Um, and I understand didn't know much about the Army. This has a, probably about three pages of stories that he shared with us um, before that. I'll let you look at it first, Joe, before I share that. But one story I thought was funny. Um, they spent several semesters... Um, together as roommates at uh, at West Point, and the second semester, where are you at, DA? It's way in the back, right there. Second semester plebe year, they were paired together because Joe was good at math, and DA was near failing. DA failed anyway. <laughs> so, and I don't know if he he said that was your fault. He has told you that. Okay. Um, and then I'm also told that uh, your big claim to fame um, that second semester when you were plebe years is that you and, and DA had the most enormous speakers. And I don't know if you remember the vice and the soup and the commandant coming into your room. Didn't comment on their shoes or their room, but they did have enormous speakers. So Joe has had uh, an enormously successful career, um, commanded literally all over the Army was a battalion commander in the 101st, um, working under uh, Drew Pappas, and probably the most, uh, in the Pesh River Valley, probably the most uh, physically and mentally challenging battalion sector, uh, I would say, of all the GWAT that we've had, and um, Joe was magnificent there. Was a brigade commander in the, in the 82nd Airborne, um, was the DCGS, um, at 4th ID, and uh, we deployed again over to, to Afghanistan. Uh, was the Chief of Staff of 18th Airborne Corps, so uh, he's had to get um, General Pappas straight. Um, he had an opportunity to help get me straight, and then was working for General Carrilla um, down in 18th Airborne Corps. Commanded 25th Infantry Division out in, in, out in Hawaii, and then, like I said, we brought him back here to be the Deputy G3, and he's been phenomenal. Um, it's hard to boil down somebody as uh, exceptionally talented as Joe in, in, in just a couple of bullets, but um, I'm going to try to do it here. 
Um, first, and I think this is the ultimate compliment in our profession, Joe is a warfighter. Joe understands how to train units, how to make sure that they're lethal, um, disciplined teams, and he's led by example um, since the day he commissioned um, and has been leading formations in training and in combat. Second is Joe knows how to get things done, and that is uh, um, another thing that I think is is critically important. It's what our it's what our troops expect. It's what our families expect. Um, Joe knows how to whatever the task is, no matter how difficult it is, he figures a way to get it done. And Scott Galloway, I think, hit it on the head when he said, "There's no ego or self promotion with Joe." only a constant desire to improve our organizations and our installations. And then third, Joe is, uh, is a joy to be around. And I think anybody who's ever served with him just enjoys having Joe Ryan on their team. They enjoy being with him. Um, and as uh, Breeden Camps put it, your candor, counsel, and conversations are always positive. If anyone ever needs anything from you, they only have to ask. So I'm going to share one more thing here, and this time from Kevin Admiral. Joe Ryan is a great friend and a true warfighter. However, I'm not sure I can ever forgive him for recommending a hotel that will remain unnamed in Fayetteville when we were there for the Force Com Senior Leader Orientation in 2018. You remember in this? I did not recommend that hotel. In one night... I must have been bitten by thousands of bed bugs and could barely see because my eyes were almost completely swollen shut. I think Tom felt he had to take me to the ER because I lost hearing, vision, and balance due to the venom coursing through me. I'd gladly go into combat with Joe anywhere, anytime, but trust me when I say he should remove his trip profile from TripAdvisor and Airbnb. So Joe, I want to I want to thank you for the work that you've already done. Um, you've made a real difference in this last year. I'm super excited. I think the whole team is super excited for you to be the Army G3, and I know it's a big job. And Julie, I appreciate your willingness to continue to take this on. Um, and I just want to end with a, a little bit of uh, very familiar old man advice. And I know you live this. Um, and the first is use your rank for good. Um, you can remember, it'd be hard to, I'm thinking all the way back to our cadet days and thinking about where we're, where we're standing right now, um, but what our young troopers expect of us to do to solve problems. Second is never forget that the small interactions mean a lot to people. You can imagine bumping into a lieutenant general sometime along the way, um, and they will remember every one of those little interactions, and I think it's important that we remember that. And then third, and I know you you do this, and I've watched you do this, is that we have to think about how our decisions affect soldiers and families at the platoon and company level that we make up here and at the Pentagon and remember that everything we do up here is all about them. And I'm going to add, too, and I always do this to the folks that are, that are serving up here in the Pentagon, um, and I think everybody knows what kind of a crazy world that we're living in right now. Um, but I would ask you to continue to act with the same sense of urgency that you've shown throughout, throughout the years. Don't let the bureaucracy confine you. And I know as the G3, that's why I think we're most excited to have you in there. I know that you won't let the bureaucracy confine us to getting the things done that we need to, be, we need to accomplish. And then second is I can't think of a better person um, to help us grow the next generation of leaders. So as busy as you are, I know that those interactions that you're going to have with people, the mentoring, the counseling, and what you're going to do to develop leaders of the future is going to mean a lot um, to our Army. So, again, thanks for taking this on. I know it's a big, it's a big, big job. I'm honored to be able to stand up here with you today. Let's pin that third star on you. Attention to orders. The President of the United States has reposed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and abilities of Joseph A. Ryan in by of the Army.
Thank you, Mrs. Ryan. Ladies and gentlemen, General George will now administer the oath of office. Thank you, General George. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General Joseph A. Ryan. Okay, um, first off, thank you to everybody who's out here this morning, General Officers, uh, Honorable Schaefer, I saw earlier today. Thank you, ma'am, for coming. Um, peers, uh, friends, family, everybody. Um, I don't have any prepared remarks, but I do want to set the record straight on a few things. First off, I did not recommend that hotel room. Um, that, was a very, that was a very traumatic trip. We, we left Fort Carson to attend the Forcecom Senior Leader Orientation, which was a very respected event at the time, still is. And um, we landed in Charlotte and found out that a softball-sized hail storm had ruined everything at Fort Carson for those who've been stationed there before. I lost two cars um, in that event and uh, and I think, I don't know what Kevin ended up losing, but the, the bed bug story is true, although it's not, it wasn't based on my recommendation. Second is um, I got DA to a, I think a C or a C minus at least over this the course of the semester and I won't explain why he failed that final, except for the fact that for those who attend West Point, you know, there was during finals week as a plea, you, you start to explore your freedom a little bit more. And, and there was this place called the River Courts, and there were some beautiful days down there. And, you know, there might have been, there might have been a sunburn involved. But I'll, I'll just leave it at that, that there were some extenuating circumstances there, too. Um, so anyway, um, but this is, uh, this is great. General George, sir, thank you very much for doing this. Um, I've known, I, I tell people I've known General George for, you know, 30, what is it now, 37 years, because he was my first cadet company command, he was my first company commander ever in the Army. He, command, he was a company commander for Company E1 uh, at, at, at West Point in 87, 88. Um, DA and I were in that company too, um, and uh, we hearken back to that time often together because it was a, it was a great group of people, and um, I didn't know much about the Army, honestly. I grew up there down the road, and you know, General Brown is here, so thank you for coming as well. General Brown was, was the basketball officer representative, then Captain Brown, um, and a great role model and mentor to me then as he is today to so many people um, and he was probably at some of those basketball camps that I went to and uh, that's why I went there because I thought I'd have a chance to play I'm a 5'11 white guy I didn't have a chance to play I can't jump can't do any of that stuff but but he he never says that when he talks about me today to include at one point when we were at uh, at Fort Moore than Fort Benning together um, he he had uh, Mike Shashevsky there to do a talk, and he was talking to Mike Shashevsky, and I went up, and I just wanted to meet the head coach of Duke basketball, and then Joan Brown started telling Mike Shashevsky what a great player I was and how I could do all these things, and I'm like, I don't know who you're talking about, but but um, he does that, and he does that in a very uh, in it's just a great way. He was a good friend of my father for many years, um, and I'm, I think some of those comments that General George made about my dad probably came from him because, uh, you know, that he, he knew him. And, uh, you know, I, I still think he's the best leader I've ever seen or been around to this day. And um, that, that, you know, means a lot to me the way I do business uh, in the Army. Um, 
other other thanks real quick. General Pappas, sir, again, thanks for changing your schedule to be here today. General Pappas was my brigade commander in uh, in the 101st Bastogne um, when we were in Afghanistan that year. It was pretty, um, um, you know, we'll just say it was an arduous deployment, and yet nobody handled it with more grace and better leadership than John Pappas. And I've always I always think back to that too, and uh, help help it helps me today think about you know. There's hard times and then there's hard times and when you can perform as a leader when times are really hard um, Then uh, it sort of tells you who you are because not everybody not everybody could but certainly General Pappas could and of course we took over for then Colonel Randy George and his brigade uh, in that same area in Afghanistan and it certainly um, well, I guess you could look at that two ways. It was hard for them too, and they didn't make it any better for us. So, I mean, it's just, just one of those things when you when you do a relief in place like that. Um, I want to thank the protocol team for uh, putting all this together, Michelle Fry um, and her group um, who, when, when we were here, I was here up on at Pat, the Patton Club for an event. Uh, actually, it was in advance of the JOTC trip, sir, that we went on a couple of months ago. Um, and of course, you know, I'd already been confirmed, but I wasn't really thinking about this. And Michelle, God love her, she said, you know, hey, sir, got to start thinking about your promotion. You know, I need to make sure that Whipple Field is available. That's where you want to do it or et cetera, et cetera. And, and I appreciate that, you know, because it, it wasn't the kind of thing I was thinking about because, as General George has mentioned, um, we get really busy in the G3 and, uh, you know, you just try to move on from thing to thing to thing. Um, and uh, it can it can overwhelm you a little bit. So I appreciate her taking the opportunity to do that for me and help me just think about something a little bit bigger um, and getting the opportunity to get everybody together. By the way, I modeled this after Brian's Brian Eifler's promotion ceremony a few months ago. He he gave me the idea zero eight Monday morning is intended to sort of keep it small and brief and informal. His was a scorcher that morning. I just remember standing out there sweating. This is actually pretty nice when you think about it. I thought it was going to be a little bit colder or there was the opportunity for that, but um, but I think it's actually pretty nice and a nice day to be up on uh, Fort Myer. I want to I want to thank um, a few other people. One who's not here, Lieutenant General Matlock, and and you know his wife Jackie, uh, great mentor to me for the last uh, 16 months, um, getting me ready to assume this role, and the kind of guy that it's very easy to take over for because, you know, just like Scott said um, no no ego, just about making the team better. And and there are many here from the G357. Uh, to include Mr. Pete Bechtel, who's our civilian deputy, and, and Patrick called him out the other day at the at the retirement ceremony, and I'll do the same. It's just a, it's a great group of people, soldiers, civilians, contractors alike, who are focused on one thing, and that's getting the job done. And if you're if you're not focused on getting the job done in the G357, you quickly find yourself sort of uh, by the wayside. So um, I appreciate that work ethic um, and that approach from the whole team. Um, family, General George pointed everybody out. Um, Uncle Bob and Pat drove down from Buffalo yesterday. Uncle Bob, I'm not sure if he said Coast Guard veteran as well, and so he's staying over here at the IHG, which is great. Great, uh, they got a great setup over there. So I, you know, we we um, we we kind of grew up and had I think a lot more contact than we've had lately. That's just life, but uh, we are so blessed, Carrie and I, that you could think to come down and, and it was one of those things where I told Uncle Bob and Aunt Pat you know hey I'm doing this promotion thing just don't want you to be surprised um, you'll probably see something on social media but you know I'll, we'll let you know how it goes send you some pictures and then next text was we're coming so okay great and uh, we, we love we love that you're here and we love you both thank you very much Kerry and Brian, Kate, Maeve, Claire, thank you all for coming down from Fairfield, too. And they did a little bit of a journey, I think, off 95 because they had to pick up Claire at Lafayette. But it's uh, it's certainly the 95 corridor there. But uh, And, again, they, they wouldn't have missed it for the world. And, uh, you know, we consider the house up there in Fairfield our second home, sometimes our first home. Um, and so uh, thanks, again, just for coming down. Maurice and Paul, same thing out of Fort Smith. We're missing Maria, of course, unfortunately, but um, we, we know she's here in spirit. Thank you very much for flying in 
and 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 come and, and attend today um, for of course Abby Joseph Ellie um, you kind of didn't have a choice mom made you come but but uh, thank you nonetheless and Joseph yeah if you can figure out a way to skate out of here without running and 1400 by the way is two o'clock that's what that means two o'clock if you can figure out a way to skate out of here without the uh, General George grabbing you um, good luck yeah that's all I can say um, to to all of our teammates here um, I'm, I'm just blessed to be able to continue to work with you um, that's that's really the bottom line I mean I don't expect anything else other than to drive down the hill a little bit later this morning and and you know put our work gloves on and get back to work so I mean that's what else is there to say um, a few other people that I just want to mention um, DA and Faye took care of me when I was when we had this year of separation here that General George mentioned um, among others uh, DA and I have you know we were roommates in college several years I think at least once every year um, and then we've grown up in the army together and some of the best times in the army I can think of is when we were either adjacent to or around uh, the Sims family to include Maddie who came last night and we love that but you know DA and Faye have always been a second family to, to me um, and uh, it, you just can't beat it. And we haven't actually been assigned too much together, but um, it never mattered because uh, we were always just keeping track and always checking in. And that's uh, that means absolutely the world to me. And and he's another guy that you know knew my dad, knew my mom, and and you know we talk about a lot of that stuff too. And of course, I know his knew his mom and 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 know his dad, and uh, we continue to have a lot of fun with that with family. So um, I, I just want to make sure I called them out. Scott Galloway um, and his family, Laura, and the kids are in the back. Scott was my chief of staff at the 25th, um, and I, I you know. Army story, right? The guy that was going to be the chief um, all of a sudden was being considered for another assignment because he had to get joint qualified and we're sitting in Afghanistan and I said, well, I got a great idea. Um, I want that guy. And uh, so, you know, the Army worked its, worked its magic. We got them to Hawaii. And um, like Scott likes to say, we did some pretty good things. You know, we, have, we did some pretty good things. And I think that's the great way to capture it. But Scott's going to retire here at the beginning of next year and he's going to make some company just fabulously wealthy. I'm confident of that. And uh, we can all aspire to that kind of greatness. Um, many, many more of you. I'd love to mention the Hartmans, the Braden Camps. I mean, General George called them out, the bench offs. We've all served together. Many of us, by the way, served as lieutenants together in, or I was a lieutenant. General Pappas was a captain. DA was in that unit. Uh, um, Trevor, Michelle was essentially in that unit. Um, Xavier Brunson, this is 3rd Battalion, 505th Parachute Infantry Regiment um, at uh, then Fort Bragg in the early 90s. And, um, you know, we think back to that all the time, and we reference back to that all the time, because it was that assignment that probably kept all of us in the Army because of the camaraderie and the leadership and just the passion for doing this work started generating. And at least I hearken back to it. Um, and often I wonder today, you know, or I think today about lieutenants and captains who are having that, that same experience. Um, and, uh, and I know that's life changing for them. Uh, I know it was life changing for me um, because uh, that's what we do this for. And that's often what spurs us on to um, bigger and better things. And again, I, you know, 30, almost, you know, 33 and a half years in the Army at this point. Never anticipated that. My father-in-law did give me the advice when I asked him about 35 years in service. He, he looked at me and he said I should have gotten out of 20. Um, I don't doubt that for a fact, but he's been pretty damn successful too. And, um, and I know he loves uh, the Army as well. Um, a couple of other people, Michelle Talley. So Michelle Talley is up here from the Chief's office. So like the Army is grinding to a halt right now. So I'll be as brief as I can possibly be. Um, Michelle is the chief's um, executive assistant. Uh, she runs the office down there no matter what XO comes through and there have been many of us who have tried and failed to, to shape it differently. Um, but we've learned and gotten better uh, because we were coached by Michelle Talley. And there's no question that that's true and I've, you know, 
candidly learned, seen that more and learned more about that in, uh, as the years have gone by. And Michelle, I'm so glad you could come up here today to help with this because you're, you, you're very special to me. I know you're very special to JD and every Chiefs XO that's been in between. So thank you for uh, doing that. Um, I'm going to do thank two more people in particular. First, Rob Haney and Chris Mullinax are here. So Chris is the G357 Star Major. As you know, Rob Haney was my CSM at uh, the 25th, and there were many other NCOs that I would love to thank and list them all. Um, my first platoon sergeant ever in the Army was a guy named Sergeant First Class David R. Martin. And then shortly after that, I had a guy named Tom Woodhams, who was uh, my mortar platoon sergeant in 3505. Commission officers are keeping us straight. Uh, and running the thing, and Rob Haney, uh, he was lucky because he got a little bit of an extended time out in Hawaii beyond my time, but uh, he was a huge part of, of whatever success we had out there, and I know Sergeant Major Mullinax is doing great things in the G357, and there are a multitude of CSMs around the Army, some many of in, in the Pentagon, and sometimes you wonder, well, you know, how, how's, how's their role fit in a place like the Pentagon where we're very officer-centric? We should never, ever, ever fall into that trap. Um, they're incredible counselors for all of us and teachers and mentors, and they, they continue to be over time, and I know I'm, I'm very grateful of, for it. Um, and last but not least is Julie. Um, we did meet in a bar. Uh, it was a pool hall, is what she said. And I'm like, when I told her last night, I said, I told the chief we met in a bar. And uh, he's probably going to say that. And she's like, oh, I'm so embarrassed. It, it was a pool hall. And I'm like, is that better? I mean, um, and it was, it was in Fayetteville. Um, but we had, we had a kinship because a um, classmate of, of DA and mine was, uh, um, had gone to high school there in, in Fayetteville with Julie. And just, you know, circuitously, we ended up. Uh, together and we met that night, but we didn't date for several months, years after that. Um, and then, you know, I got lucky as a single lieutenant in North Carolina, and I never really spent much time in the South being a New Yorker, having an adopted family with Julie and her mom and her dad, who had just retired, and um, they welcomed me into their home. And, uh, you know, I, I told, I remember telling my mother. I'm going to marry her. <laughs> and, and, sorry. And, and I think she was a little bit like taken aback because um, she didn't know Julie. She didn't know the family. She didn't know, you know, anything about um, them. And then as soon as they met, my mom and dad met Julie. We were off to the races, um, and uh, we haven't looked back since. And she's as special to them, was as special to them as, as Carrie and I ever were, I think. Same with Brian. Um, I love you. Okay. Um, I didn't mean to get emotional there, but, uh, you know, these things happen. So I was at uh, a retirement. I was at reti a retirement the other day. Uh, and Chris Leneve retired a guy in the G357 uh, who'd been serving down there for like 40 years. He was a civilian guy named Tom Kidwell, and he does force management down there in the G357. Um, and he said, he said something that resonated with me. Uh, he said, I've had two constants in my life for the last 40 years for him. Uh, it's been about that long for me, my family and the Army. And uh, he said, I can't believe I'm you know, retiring from the Army and I'm going to lose that. And so I'm just thankful to stay and continue to have those two constants in my life because that's, uh, that's important. And the, be, the fact that much of my family was able to come here and share it with us, um, I'm just very thankful. Thank you very much. This will defend. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Please join in congratulating Lieutenant General and Mrs. Ryan in the receiving line following their family photo. Thank you for attending.